What's up, people? Welcome back to Snack Time. Episode 3, we have a very special guest, Amiel Haney. He's an amazing record producer. Um, just going to warn you guys, he's a good friend. So we've got some banter in this episode. That means some going back and forth and making fun of each other. Let's look at my snack. How about this? I'm going to save this for the interview and talk about it there. It's quite chocolatey, quite cakey. You may remember in the uh, past episode, if you are a loyal um, viewer, you may remember I talked about the fact that I had a uh, cakey Italian snack. This is not that. And they were sold out of that. I tried to get it again. Pardon me, got to hydrate here. And uh, they were sold out. So, listen, I want to talk to you about Emil a little bit. He's an amazing producer. He's worked with people like Bruno Mars, Florence and the Machine, Lana Del Rey. He did Kid Cudi's, like, very legendary album. He worked with him for quite a while, actually. Did the mixtape with him. Um, we don't really talk that much about music. We do talk about gear, a bit about music. We talk about food. We talk about some movies he's seen. You know what? Why don't I just let you enjoy for yourself? Emil Haney, welcome to Snack Time. Hey, what's up, Arthur? You're very casual. You have to respect me. I'm a talk show host now. I respect your new position. I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed because we started off really well, and then I was interrupted with, with what's becoming a serious pet peeve of mine, which is we're all up and running on the Zoom and it's all good. And people started responding to text with the thumbs up sign and with the exclamation point. Why does every text that we send have to be verified with the fucking thumbs up sign? Explain that to me. Watch your mouth uh, on this show, please. We're trying to keep a little family friendly. I want people to be able to watch with their kids if they're around. But I don't fucking know, to be honest with you. Nobody's watching your talk show with their kids. I, I hope we... <laughs> You know what? I think I think we should let people know that we've known each other for about 21 years. At least. Too long. Too many. Too many years. I feel like you're one of the first people I met. One of the first people in New York when I moved to Queens from Buffalo in the 90s, in the late 90s. You were one of the first people that I met. Who who introduced us? Okay. So easy. It's so easy. Well, there's one or two people, and I don't remember. It's either Cochise or Michelle Tulu. Michelle Tulu. Okay, well. Big ups to Michelle Tulu. Big ups to Cochise. Big ups to Shimmy. Big ups to both, to all three of them. Yes. Yes. Big up. Big ups to Buffalo. I've never even been, but I feel like I'm from there sometimes around you guys. A lot of people from there. Yes, there are. So uh, first things first, uh, Emil is a for our audience is a fabulous music producer. Uh, is that, is that what, I mean, titles, titles, schmidles, but what, is that what you are? If you call me a fabu fabulous music, yeah. <laughs> Do you like, is that like in your bio, does it say Emil Haney is a fabulous music producer? That's what I like it to say. You've worked with the likes of, uh, Lana Del Rey, Fun, uh, Florence and the Machine, of course Kid Cudi everyone knows about and is always asking what, you know, when you're going to get in the studio with him, which I find humorous because every time there's you guys post something of each other, it's like, they're, they're back together. <laughs> it's so crazy. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. But anyway, let's wait. I want to talk about your snack. Okay. I always get ahead of myself in these interviews, Emil. Since you're, really you're my friend, maybe you can coach me a bit. I don't know. Coach you. Coach you when we see this snack that you got. Chambella. Whoops. Chambella. Dude. This. Is that your snack? Listen, I've had, I had apples last week. How is that a snack, first of all? That's a dessert for a seven-year-old's birthday party of, of 15. Okay, it's snack time. What do you want? Look at my background. You know? What do you call it? Chambana? Chambella. Chambella. It's a donut, bro. You got that from Krispy Kreme. It's it's Krispy Kreme. basically an Italian donut. It's a it's actually a bunk cake, like Italian style bunk cake. I'm yeah. gonna open it up for you here. No, you dirty man. I only see your background, so it looks like it's filled with Skittles. Look, which would be disgusting. It basically but... is. It's got chocolate in it. Yeah, let's see. 
Hmm. Where the hell did you get these? You made this? No. What kind of... What? I got it at the store. It tastes like it was on a ship coming over from Italy for like 12 years. What did you get? Gerstides? Where? It's delicious. No, here in my neighborhood we have some spots that have, you know, various things. All right. Let's see your snacks, LA guy. I know I'm real cliche. Oh hey, my I'm god! On this, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a healthy, a healthy quarantine, so I got some radish, radishes I made. I have to say, besides this show, Probably that's how I've been eating. Yeah. Okay. Look at that. I made that for you. Look at that. Put olive oil and some white wine vinegar and some lemon zest. You okay? I wanted to get into this. When did you start? First of all, that's delicious. It's not hard to get put together. You don't have to be a chef, but just giving you props. When did you start chefing it up in your in your life? Well, um, I was since I was a kid. My uh, my older. I'm stuck was, eating this during the interview. By the way, it's the concept of the show. You know. I get it. I get it. Um, yours, you could just put in your mouth and swallow. I actually have to chew mine, so it's a little bit. You know, it's different. Um, I always cooked. My sisters told me that when I was even a kid that I um, I got into cooking. I remember it messed me up when I was really young. I had um, Korean barbecue. And I was so freaked out about it. And, you know, I can't remember where I had it, but you definitely weren't getting it in Buffalo. So I must have had it in New York on a trip to my grandparents or something. And I would try to recreate that when I was, like, pretty young, like 12, 13, you know. Oh, Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I never knew that about you. That's wild. I'm not saying I did a, a good job recreating it. I think <laughs> I remember I used stew meat that was like, you know, $2, and I tried to just hit it on the pan with a little sauce or something. It didn't work out so well, but I've always been interested in cooking. And I, I'd say in the last, like, maybe maybe since I moved to L.A., I got really into cooking. Cause you get I it. think a little bit before, to like, just yeah. as, as someone who knows you. You and Eddie. I've always cooked. I just mean like, I think like, you know, making it something that became a big part of my life rather than just, oh, I'm going to do a dinner and cook for you. Like, since I moved here, it became a big part of life. Yes. Yeah. I've enjoyed many a dinner party at your house. Yeah. That's a lie. Did you say enjoyed or endured? Enjoyed. No, I haven't been to any. You kind of comboed. Oh, you haven't? Mike, you've never had one when I'm in town. Not even in my honor. Come on, why not? Well, I don't know how, I don't know how to make jimbani. I'll figure it out. <laughs> but, you, but, you know, it's funny because you went, like, I remember you and Eddie, used, Eddie Wong used to chef it up uh, at your house on Bleecker Street, right? Yeah. And then you've met a lot of chefs since, since then. You collect them as friends. You're, you're like a chef groupie. That's a weird... That's a weird eh, like, you're a chef groupie. What are you working on these days, guy? Um, well, we're in a quarantine and there's not, it's weird. It's work is, work is a little, it's hard to work, you know? I mean, I'm a music producer, so it's a lot easier for me. I, That's what I was going to say. You have everything right there. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I've been, I've been using the time to really, um, like archive and make new sounds, listen to new records. I kind of been feeling that way anyway, that I needed like a, a reset and just like, you know, producers always, we kind of collect new sounds, whether you're, you know, buying a new drum kit and miking it a certain way or sampling from some old records or synthesizers or making drum kits, whatever your thing is, whatever your genre is, we all kind of have the same process, I think. Um, so I've been doing that, you know, it's like a lot of making folders and listening to new music. And I've been buying so many records. I've had so much time. Oh, really? Music. And I've always come from a... You know, I don't sample so much anymore, but listening to records and catching energy off a record are just like has always been my thing since day one, and I think that's a good way to like kind of expand the the mind and the palate. So I've been buying so many records and listening to so much. So you're music. still in a creative process, though, right? Yeah, definitely. You know, I just haven't been like, you know, there hasn't been artists coming in, and I'm not working on like a specific album at the moment. You know. Yeah, I figured there wouldn't be artists coming in. I just thought maybe you'd be working on songs or something. I think we'll get up, but I mean, I think it's a good time to like hit the reset button and like when this is over, when when I do 
picked up a new album, it's like the sonics and the sound is, is something very new and different. You know? So I think like kind of just make it sound, you know? Oh, so do you, uh, do you feel like there's an evolution to your sound at, at this time or is just, a, I don't even know how to ask the question in a sophisticated, you know, musical way. You know what I mean? I'm just a, a I fan. Mean, I don't know. It's just expanding, you know? I mean, I haven't been in one place for so long that it's nice to just kind of settle and like listen for a second rather than just go, 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 work, work, work. It's like sit down and chill and like mellow out and just like listen to stuff and kind of come up with new ideas, you know? I totally get it. What uh, what has come out lately that you've worked on for people who want to... Um, you know what just came out? It's it's pretty cool, actually. It's this Florence and the Machine song called Light of Love, and it's she wanted to put it out and donate all the proceeds to uh, COVID research in the UK, which she did, and the song is really, really beautiful. And um, That's great. Yeah, it came out, like, maybe two weeks ago. So that's nice to see you're still collaborating with them. You, uh, with her, you, you did the whole entire last album, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, that's nice. I have, uh, I have a fond memory of, of, uh, being at a little event for that. You love Florence. I love Florence. I love Florence. Okay, came to the, um, we had a little private, little karaoke thing or something. It never... wasn't a karaoke thing. It was just, they had a dinner, and then afterwards with some drinks, and you were running a little late, but the best part about it is I got there, and they had just wrapped up dinner, because you were like, I'll be there in a few minutes, and everyone looked at me like, who's this guy? And I was just like, hi, I'm with Emil, <laughs> and they were like, okay, <laughs> but then by the end of the night, you know, we were trying to figure out which Madonna song to put on. And I remember coming in, and you were very turned. That's my memory of that. That's my only memory. Yeah, it was good. Good time. Yeah. Uh, uh, how's LA been? Walking around in, in the neighborhood and stuff like that? I go walking around. I got, you know, I walk I walk like crazy these days, you know? Mm hmm This is horrible, by the way. Can I stop eating it now? It looks delicious. Mm. Is it soft? It's very what? soft. But so what's it? if it was... Like, made in a bakery, fresh, I might love it, but no, 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 no. Oh, I'm so jealous. Let me see that radish. Look at that. How beautiful that is. It's beautiful. That's that L.A. produce. I don't understand the L.A. produce thing. I mean, yeah, L.A. gets good produce, but I go to New York and go to the Union Square Farmer's Market, and it's the most beautiful produce I've ever seen. Yeah, in one place in New York City. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't count. You need to, it needs to be distributed everywhere. Well, yeah, you're in California. You're gonna get you're gonna get bummed out if I start saying anything negative about California. No, yeah, go ahead. I didn't say let's hear it. Let's hear. I'm sure the the people, the 1.1 million people that follow uh, sneakers and stuff, would love to hear you <laughs> poop no, on I California. I think it's weird when New York is like, ah, oh, the LA produce. It's like New York produce is incredible. What do you mean? Uh, California produce is anyway. I think we're boring people who just want to know when the next Jordan sneaker is coming out. <laughs> Wait, what the hell am I doing? Look at what am I wearing? Like this is for a sneaker. What is that? What is that? It's a Solomon. Hey man, that counts. It's like fashion sneaker. Yeah, very very art 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 gallery fashion sneaker. <laughs> art studio, I should say. It's you good know, for walking around the the you know. Do you miss New York? Would you like to move here again? I don't feel like I've ever left New York, you know? I mean... Mm. Well, let me tell you, as someone who's been here the whole time, and as yeah. someone who's your friend, is uh, you've left New York. I mean... <laughs> I'm just messing with you, man. Come on. Here's the thing. My plan was, all right, I'm going to relocate to L.A. for a bit. Because that's where everyone's, you know, cutting records that I'm working with right now. And I just need a little change of scene. But I have so many people that I work with in New York that I'll be home. New York is home for me. I'll be there yeah. every four months out of the year. But I swear to you, right when I came here, I, I wasn't the only one with that bright idea. Because all the people that I work with in New York moved out right behind me. And it's like, you know, it's when I go now, I still go as often as I can. But I go more to visit friends and family than, you know, to go Fair. to the Fair. You know I mean? um, yes, of course, I'm 
course, New York, New York is home, home. I don't feel like a home in LA. I feel like I'm a visitor where like New York is always just LA. So speaking of LA and LA friends, you know, working with people in LA and kind of getting to know your community there, you're in a wine club, an unofficial wine club, right? Oh, I know where you're going with this. What do you mean? You, it's it's out in the public. I think it's a joke on Instagram, but yeah, like me and my boy Egon and the producer Mad Lib and Mike D from the Beasties have like a a joke about being in a wine club. Yeah. Are you? Uh, th this is the this is the real question though. Is are this is very timely too with the Beastie Boys documentary coming out? Um, yep. Are you guys often together in the whole group and having wine together? The whole group isn't like me and Egon are together all the time. Egon and Madlib are together all the time. I talk to Mike pretty regularly. I know, but like to get the four assembled is not as often as. One would think, but okay, yeah, okay. So those are the special occasions, if you will. Two, two to three out of the four is probably a weekly event. Yeah. That, but so then that's an official meeting of the club, two to three. Yeah. Good, good, good to know. Good to know. Can people register? Can they apply? Um, if you're <laughs> trying to get at getting a membership, I already talked to the guys about it, and it's a no until 2021. But we're, you know. <laughs> Apply. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll apply in 2021. I, I look forward to that. What um? You hear the thing buzzing. It's somebody giving the thumbs up to something I said two hours ago. Why do you do that? It's important. That's it's important. It's validation. It's they, so stupid. <laughs> it's so stupid. Even saying okay or cool or yes is kind of unnecessary. Like to do so. So check it out. Before this interview started, I text. I, I text a couple people that I've been texting with today and saying, I'm recording, please don't text me. And one of them hit me back with, okay. And it's yeah. like, what? I just said I'm recording, please don't text me. That should be just- I the Zoom thing, I got my computer here next to me, I got my phone, it's just devices are going on. Yes, I, I get it, I'm with you. Uh, what do you, what, let's talk about kind of like some of the, your, is, is it fair to say your favorite artists that you've worked with in the last year? Um, I, I can't, there's stuff coming out I can't really talk about that's going to come out soon, actually, that I really, you know, but. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Thank you. Thank you for that. Well, what kind, I mean, who are, who are your favorite artists you work with? What am I going to do? Like, name two and then leave off the rest and just, what, what, what are these questions? There's nothing that's coming out that you can tell us about. I've known you last twenty years, and this is this is what is this your prep? You wrote these down. Do you know how many people? You know how many young artists asks me ask me like musical artists? They they I guess they go there and they see that like they must they must follow me and I fo I follow you and they follow you too on it. So they see the mutuals like hey. Do you think you can introduce me to your friend Emil? And that's when I realized you've kind of done you've done something. You've done, you know it takes your friends kind of longer to realize than everyone else. So I found I find it funny when they ask, but it also makes me happy, you know. Right. But mind you, I've not introduced any of them to you. So people out there, leave it alone. I appreciate that. The man is busy. The man is busy. The man is no, busy. No, no. You you know what? I'll tell you what. Maybe I. I, I take it back when I say I appreciate that because one of those kids will be fire and I'll probably sleep on it, but you'll listen to it and tell me that it's good because you've done this for a number of really great artists that you were very early on, my friend, and ended up being big successful artists. It took you this long in the interview to give me a compliment? People have like logged off already. You can edit it. Just <laughs> edit it, make that... You could you could delete where you called me a chef groupie and then you could put that. In the <laughs> I'm gonna no, I'm gonna isolate this and use right. it as a separate video to post. How about that? That'll be your that'll be your clip. That that'll be your 15 second teaser. It'll end right here. Okay. Um, very cool. What else you got? What else you got for me, guy? Um, you want to talk to Marvin? Oh my gosh, I totally forgot about Marvin. You're right. I'm ill prepared. What's up, Marvin? Marvin my, makes regular appearances on your Instagram. This is my roommate and studio assistant, but he 
He's not. He's a good roommate. He's a horrible studio assistant. He's a bad, but he lays on your equipment. On like, so you have some pretty rare equipment. How's that? Pretty rare cat. Okay. All right. As long as you're cool with it, man. Uh, where did the name come from? Marvin, look at him. Okay, he's just a Marvin. I was just curious if there was any uh, inspo for that. No, he just looks like a Marvin. So for the gearheads, I know some of them are here. You want to talk about a couple of your latest pieces you've, you've acquired? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. What do I, I don't That's fun. Thanks, Emil. You're really a uh, great. I'm so glad we're doing this. You know. I mean, yeah. I guess you're right. Okay, this thing's cool. I like you, to rep this company too because this is a young. I think they're young, but it's a small. Oh my god! I love that. Called Critter and Guitari, and it makes this thing is so fun. It's like a little keyboard sampler synth. It's less than four hundred dollars, and it sounds amazing. So. You know, I thought that was actually somebody else altogether. I thought it was another young company that does uh, little things. So that's Grit, Critter and Guitari. Yeah, really okay. good. Um, what else? I don't know. I got all the same. You know what I'm doing? This is for the real nerds, but I'm I'm kind of redoing my entire studio. So part of the like downtime and archiving, I'm also doing new computer, new AD cards, all this kind of stuff. You know, like modernizing everything. So that's you can't really do that when you're in the middle of work. But Well, I was going to ask you, what advice do you have for like younger kids who are, because a lot of them are collaborating or working together during when they can. And right now, if they can't, and if they want to kind of do a little bit, bit of that, but they're budget limited or they're, you know, they are buying the new Jordan 5s that are coming out. But yeah. what, what do you suggest for them in terms of like ramping up their studio during this time? I mean, I think it's just getting, there's so much free software and cheap stuff like I just showed you. Like, there's so many things to explore. And you can also work with other artists. I mean, I'm hearing, I have producer friends who are, like, sending all these tracks back and forth and going on Instagram and hitting people they don't even know like that. Like, hey, can you add something to this and passing it to the next one and the next one? All that stuff's really cool and should be happening anyway. It kind of does happen, especially in, you know, with young producers and in hip-hop where you got all these young rappers from America are connecting with like producers in, you know, Denmark and right. Norway, places like this. And just like everything's kind of happening online and swapping files. And, you know, I think what's cool with this generation of producers is there's a lot less, uh, a lot less secrets and a lot less like exclusivity in terms of protecting your sound and hoarding your tracks and not like, Everyone just sends everything, and that's how a lot of music gets made. And I think that's cool. We're like, I came up in the generation where it's like, you have to protect all of your sources and all of your drums and all of your sonics by all means. And, you know, you have to be extremely careful who you give your beat tape or beat CD to and all this kind of stuff. All that shit is dead now. And I think that's great because it just, you know, it, even if your stuff does end up in the wrong hands, it just inspires you to make more and, you know, Nine times out of ten, it's going to get somewhere kind of cool that it wouldn't have gotten if you were. Cool. I completely agree. I think it is a, it, it is kind of just putting it out there and sharing your sources right now because it becomes more collaborative. It's super interesting. All right, cool. So you mentioned you're doing your work at home and kind of ramping up the studio. Um, on the other front, you know, I know you're cooking a lot. Are you enjoying any movies or like TV or anything like that? Oh, you better believe it. Tell me. Uh, you know what? I remember when I was living in Queens and um, I used to watch every single movie that came out. So we're talking like late 90s, very early 2000s. My process, I would sit in my room, and make, like make beats all day long, and then I would get videos. And, you know, I was in Sunnyside, Queens, and it's a it's one of the most ethnically diverse communities on earth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would get all these foreign films and just fall in love. And I learned like a lot about the world watching these foreign films on VHS. And I've found a lot of those movies. So I've been rewatching all these films from like back in the day. And it's really, I love it, you know? And like, um, can you give us a few names or are you just going to keep us wondering after that long intro? <laughs> um, they're going to be out of order though. I don't, I don't want to well, like, just go. Them. I don't remember, but like, 
It's I, a talk I, show. You're on Letterman right now. I rewatch like all these Jacques Audiard movies, like the beat that my heart skipped. Wow. And um, the one before that, I rewatched like uh, um, what else? What else did I rewatch, Arthur? Oh, like Tell No One. Um, a lot of those kind of films. I rewatched. Uh, God damn it, Steve! Put me on the spot, and I can't remember anything. All right, that's enough. People are gonna think. <laughs> This guy, Emil, I wanted to meet this whole time. He doesn't seem very interesting. <laughs> yeah, that didn't go so well. You know what I re what I watched recently though that was really good was um this movie uh, Monos, which was incredible. Yes. I watched Embrace the Serpent, which was super fire, and then the guy's next movie called Birds of Passage, which was unbelievable. Um, I rewatched this documentary about the photographer Salt of the Earth. You ever see that? No, I've never seen that. So good. I rewatched that. I was watching Curb Your Enthusiasm and that ended, which was like, man, can you imagine if there was like another couple months of... It would have been so good for this time, right? So good. Oh. I've been trying to watch, like, everyone loves Ozark. I find that shit to be super trash. I can't get into it. Um, I watched watch Ozark. I like it. So stupid. Do you watch uh, My Beautiful Friend? My Brilliant Friend? No. Big mistake. What's it called? My Brilliant Friend. No. I never it, basically, it. it's like when you're at your house and you think of me, my brilliant friend. That's what you think about, right? So it's going to annoy me. <laughs> you're one to talk. All right, Emil Haney. On that note, thank you so much for joining us here on behalf of Parks Department and SNS. I don't want to bore people to death anymore. Listen, no. Honestly, thank you for doing this. I hope... Uh, you're having a, a good rest of your quarantine. These are disgusting. They're delicious. I'm sure they are. I'll text you the recipe. It's very complicated. Yeah, just cut some veggies, huh? All right. Take care. Thank you. It's fun. Thanks, Bye. Sam. How about that guy? Huh? That is... A really great dude. He, oh, first of all, these are trash. He's a great dude. These are trash. The plate can go with it. I don't mind, though, because I brought reinforcements today. You see me messing around with the keyboard. That's me messing around with the shots, trying to get new shots in. Ooh, did not like that transition for that. That was That's for other things. I got backups today. I got these Pringles. You're thinking, just Pringles? Ha! Ha! No. Okay? Bulldog. If you've ever been to Japan, or if you are Japanese, you know what I'm talking about. So, Bulldog sauce and Pringles. But Emil, uh, a lot of fun talking to him. Like I said, a lot of banter. But I like I liked the advice he gave the young, uh, young musicians and producers out there, pardon me, about... Just getting free software. I think a lot of people know that already, obviously. But And looking at the cheaper kind of alternatives. I know Teenage Engineering also makes really cool little... Um, you know, the, one would think they're toys, but they make really dope sounds. I don't make music myself. And they actually did something... I don't know if it was a collab or just an event with SNS, who is our partner in this show. Um... War Parks Department, their SNS. We put the show together for you guys. Uh, so look out for Teenage en Engineering. I'm really into them. And the brand he mentioned as well, I think is pretty cool. Let me just get you over here. Let's see what's going on here with this. I'd be lying if I said this is my first time ever doing this. Oh my goodness, that is so good. Tune in next week. I have a guest who is a great musician. He's, um, he's a jazz musician who just put out an album with his group. Once again, I'm not going to tell you who it is. I'm going to have you tune in. And if uh, anyone out there in the world can do anything about getting me those Jordan, uh, Jordan 5s, let me know because I want them. 
Who's having fun? Oh, Emil and I didn't even talk about the Jordan doc. That's crazy. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. I got to go. Have a good week. Mm. Okay. Goodbye.